Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, and welcome to this third webinar organized by Caritas Internationalis on the occasion of its 70th anniversary. Today, uh, in our uh, journey uh, in uh, knowing better all the Caritas region, the seven Caritas region all over the world, we will go to Oceania for uh, uh, this webinar on uh, promoting integral human development, Caritas Oceania in the spirit of Laudato Si. So I would like to remember you that this webinar is uh, uh, translated simultaneously in uh, French, Spanish, and Italian, and will be entirely held in uh, English. And uh, you just have to switch on the translation uh, icon. You just have to press on the translation icon, which is at the bottom of the, the Zoom screen. To find more information about Caritas Internationalis 17th anniversary, um, you can go on our website, www.caritas.org. And uh, now, I'll give you the floor to Caritas Internationalis Secretary General, Aloysius John, for some uh, introductory remark, please. Thank you, Marta. Good morning to all of you. Good evening and good afternoon. A dear eminence, Colonel Mafi, President of Caritas Oceania, and also member of the executive board. Dear excellencies, Dear directors and collaborators, and also dear president of Caritas Asia, Dr. Alo, and other presidents of the regions. Greetings from Caritas Internationalis, and welcome to the webinar on the Oceania region. This is the third webinar in a series of seven webinars organized on the basis of the regions. And it is a pleasure to have the Oceania region witness how Caritas serves out of love the poorest in the region. The 70th anniversary, it was said by the Expo, should be a moment of witnessing. Speaking to the world from the regional perspective, how regions are promoting integral human development during the past decades, the challenges they faced, and also the success stories. Oceania is a unique region with the diversity of richness and a variety of problems. First of all, it is a region of rich ancient tradition where men lived in harmony with the nature and the environment, wherein the social life was conditioned by the symbiosis of the human person with the nature. It is also a region where mother nature is put to harsh trial due to human folly and, that, and this in turn affects the human existence. The problems of these regions are many, unemployment, feminization of poverty in some island states, poverty conditions in general terms and their consequences. The biggest problem is the environmental problem which is being addressed by the Caritas member organizations in this region. This is one of the regions that is confronted with lots of natural disasters, 
which has adverse effects on the population and their day-to-day -day activities. Caritas in this region are a symbol of struggle to promote integral ecology, to create the lost symbiosis between the human person and the mother nature, to create harmony in the society by integrating the ecological dimension into the development activities. We have different speakers who will share with us their testimonies of how the Caritas in the region are organized and how they struggle to create social harmony and promote integral ecology. Let us listen to their stories of sharing, caring, and accompanying the poorest to en enable them to live in dignity. Thank you. Thank you, Aloysius. And, uh, and now we are going to listen many voices uh, from, uh, from Oceania that will be really a, a, a vocal uh, webinar. Cardinal Mafi, our regional coordinator, Tini Toala, and uh, uh, other representatives from, the, from this region, which uh, really represent in, a, in small what the Confederation is. Uh, uh, being united uh, in in the in diversity, and now we will know more about the the diversities and the challenge and the work of this uh, this region. I'll uh, uh, I'll pass now the floor to Sophie Jenkins, who is the uh, regional accompaniment coordinator of Caritas Oceania, who will moderate this webinar from now on. So, Sophie, over to you. Thank you, Marta, and good evening, everyone. On behalf of Caritas Oceania, I warmly welcome you to our regional celebration on this, the 70th anniversary of Caritas Internationalis. I am joining this evening from the lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the first peoples of these lands known today as Sydney, Australia. I would like to pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging and extend that deep respect to the Indigenous peoples of all of the lands on which we are joining from this evening. Indigenous peoples have cared for the lands, seas and skies of Oceania for generations, and in many cases for millennia. They have done so in recognition of the sacredness of creation and the interconnectedness between people and our planet. As we gather this evening to reflect on this 70th anniversary, we would like to first ground our discussion by acknowledging the traditional custodians on the lands on which we are all gathered. Tēnā koutou katoa, uh, ko te pōhohua tōku ingoa, uh, ko no, no mai tūhoi a hau, uh, ko i te kai hapai Māori uh, o Caritas Aotearoa New Zealand, uh, e mihi atu ana ki a koutou katoa. Uh, tēnei au, e, e, e mihi mai mamao, uh, mai, mai te, uh, te mona nui a kiwa, uh, ki a koutou kei te ao, uh, nei aku mihi ki a koutou katoa. Uh, e tika ana, uh, ki au, ki a mau, uh, ki o mātou uh, tikanga, ki o mātou reo take take uh, o tēnei takiwa o te ao. Uh, ko te mana nui a kiwa tēnei, uh, anō hoki ko te moana tā poko poko a tā whaki, a ki o tā whaki, mm. uh, ki ngā whenua moe moe iau ahi tareiria. Uh, tēnei au e, e mihi atu ana ki a koutou katoa, uh, ko e he māngai, uh, mō ngai Māori, uh, mō ngai tātou o Aotearoa. Uh, ko te mea nui ko te aroha, a koina te taura i here ai i a tātou katoa, a te nā koutou, te nā koutou, a kia ora mai tātou katoa. Tūtala noa is a commonly used concept, particularly in the Pacific Islands, in Fiji, Samoa and Tonga throughout many generations. Talanoa was also the methodology used to base conversations in COP20 to engage in inclusive, participatory 
and transparent Talanoa. Fofola e fala ka e Talanoa e ka inga is a uniquely Tongan conceptual framework. It means to roll out the mats so the family can dialogue. The family in the Tongan context can be extended from the immediate to the extended kainga. It is an invitation to the members. It is an invitation to the members of the kainga to come together and talanoa. The fala or the mat signifies family, grounding, or safe space. The feunu or strands that are used to weave the mat represent respect, humility, forging of good and respectful relationships, and the passion for ensuring completion. The underlying meaning then is an invitation to come together, be seated one and all on the mat to talanoa and arrive at an agreed solution. It is a safe space without hierarchical order where people should not fear intimidation. Even children have something to say and we all agree on the future together. Land along the eastern coast where the rainforest meets the reef. As part of my reflection today, I'm going to share with you um, traditional music from the area that I come from. Um, it's a woodwind instrument called the didgeridoo. And in this photo here, we have the elder. Um, Uncle Ashley is his name. He is holding the didgeridoo. And we also have the smoke in the image, which signifies cleansing of any bad energy, any negativity. So I just share this image with you today um, as part of my reflection to acknowledge that this is a, is a good space to be. Um, it's it, We welcome the positivity that's to come, good discussion, all good things, as well as the music we have to share. I'm unsure if you've ever heard of a didgeridoo before, Basically, it is a wood wind instrument that's um, been hollowed out on the inside by termites. So this didgeridoo, for example, would have once been part of a tree. Uh, in this image, this is um, a photo of my brother that I have permission to share with you all. So he is sitting in a studio playing his didgeridoo. Um, basically, the men put it to their mouth and they have a special way that they play it that I don't know how to play it as a woman um, but it creates a sound a resounding sound and this sound when we hear it means that something important is about to happen and that we need to give our full attention uh, to the task that's yet to come um, so this I will play the music for you but I would just like to firstly Acknowledge and show respect to our Indigenous leaders of the lands and seas in which we are each gathered today. As we listen to this music that is acknowledging our country, acknowledging the seas we all come from, acknowledging where we are in our, in our important place in the world, I just want to leave us with this quote. Let us dream, then, as a single human family, as fellow travellers sharing the same flesh, as children of the same earth, which is our common home, each of us bringing the richness of his or her beliefs and convictions, each of us with his or her own voice, brothers and sisters all. When I think of the work of Caritas, I also think of this next quote that I will share with you. The didgeridoo music will play again to signify um, that this is an important time for us to be coming together.
So it is not possible to settle for what was achieved in the past and complacently enjoy it. As if we could somehow disregard the fact that many of our brothers and sisters still endure situations that cry out for our attention. Thank you for your time today and I, I wish you the best for all your meetings um, and let's go forth together. Thank you to Sabrina, Amalia and Tepo there for sharing those rich reflections um, from our region. I would now like to welcome His Eminence Cardinal Mafi, Bishop of Tonga Nui, President of Caritas Oceania, to share his reflections on the unique gifts of our Oceania region as we celebrate this 70th anniversary of Caritas Internationalis. Your Eminence, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sophie. Uh, before I share a little bit on the topic given to me, I certainly join um, Sabrina and Amelia and our friend uh, Tutti for the uh, uh, expressing in the traditional way the welcome, especially to our friends from Caritas Internationalis. Uh, is already uh, being shown through the uh, traditional way of welcome. Uh, it's, it lies fittingly with the whole idea of the gift and the uniqueness of various uh, regions that comprises the, uh, the confederation of, of Caritas. Because I think... Uh, that's how God created us to be uniquely uh, different and, uh, and diversified, as well as uh, our commonality, which is uh, mainly what we strive and look for that unite us. Uh, last night I was with the uh, Ryan, and uh, I was watching the first um, five minutes of the video recording uh, showing the environments and the beauty of uh, rivers, and mountains, the blue skies, the oceans, you know, all this. And I said to myself, these are the unique uh, gifts that various regions uh, on our planet and uniquely also the gifts of Oceania as Alois uh, mentioned in the beginning, you know, I thought of also of the gospel last Sunday, uh, small, despite of the small token, this poor woman widow, but she gave it all, uh, all that she got. And, and I thought of that, of this little uh, initial reflection, uh, and it's something beautiful that the uniqueness of our region, even the diversities, the richness, especially of the environment, which is the main concern of these days. These are the, the very much in the, in the heart of the mission of Caritas. And I thought to myself, what, what would be Caritas Oceania will continue to give? And I think this is the whole purpose of this 70th anniversary. It's a call to, 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 to look at what we have as part of God's creation, our uniqueness. Uh, we can recall even uh, when we tour or visit Europe, Europe has their own uniqueness. Uh, you know, I, I recall myself walking through museums and historical places. You know, these are the, uh, the, the early civilization and the development and progress of humanity from Europe and so forth. I think this, this idea of the uniqueness of the various regions uh, and, 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 and calling us forth to just give what we have. And I think I also thought last night as I was sharing with our brothers and sisters, Rowan, of what Pope Francis is actually trying to, uh, to promote uh, this sense of listening to the uniqueness and the different gifts of, of each other, 
uh, and, and allow a space and opportunity to, to share them. So I thought of that uh, as, uh, as I make this uh, brief uh, reflection. Last night also, uh, we had the opportunity to listen from those who are actually at COP26 COP, uh, meeting. Uh, there was a little bit of tone of a little upset in some of them as they share these panelists last night. And then, um, you know, a few others from the audience also expressed that. And one of the examples too of the, there were a few delegates from our side, from Oceania. It's only a few uh, were able to, to attend. But anyway, I was struck by what uh, the auxiliary bishop of um, Bombay, uh, Bishop Silva, he rounded up with Archbishop Peter Loy the sharing of the Rowan webinar last night. And he talked about the faith, uh, the importance of faith that perhaps like a unique um, uh, powerhouse that perhaps in the midst of the frustrations, actually he was giving us a little boost, a little uh, encouragement. And that's what I would just quickly share about tonight especially in regards to our, our mission as Caritas, uh, because I think we are in a very critical time where faith is, is getting shallow and, and, and linking to that love is getting a little bit stale. And I think what Pope Francis is promoting, especially with his two encyclicals, Laudato Si and Fratelli Tutti, you know, he is giving the whole world a powerful message directly point out to what is really shrinking to me, at least in our world, and faith. And I think Caritas for us is a, is a special call to be in the front line to give a face of hope uh, to people. And if I, I, I put it in a nutshell, uh, it's not a new message for us Caritas, a family of Caritas, especially to give a face of God with our uniqueness that I talked about in the beginning. Uh, it's our task to find our way, of course, through the inspiration. And we are so blessed in the church with, with the inspiration of the social teachings and magisterium and so forth. And we are on the lead by our our Holy Father in, 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 in challenging us as the heart of the church to, to bring hope to people and especially to the, to the little ones. Something else I also like to do bring in this uh, point of our webinar, it also flows from uh, Pope Francis, this whole call for, for listening uh, for, for attentive ears and, and eyes. As I was watching all the colorful gifts and unique uh, uh, blessing of, uh, of Oceania and Asia uh, last night, you know, I, I, I thought to myself, if only we have the ears to listen, the eyes to see. Otherwise, we are in a very busy, busy world. People on the move. So it's a big challenge for us, Caritas. And I was talking last night, and sorry for repeating that. I was talking, and perhaps it's like in uh, sum up for us in this uh, uh, initial preliminary sharing. I was talking about perhaps two lights that represent Caritas, uniquely for us, Caritas, in a way. The light of a beacon is like a siren that calls for for attention. And I think it is very much one big part of, of, of our task to give a voice to the voiceless by sounding big sounds to the whole world. Unfortunately, we don't know what will be the, the final conclusion of COP26, but I think we would not be tired. We will keep on because there is something called faith that that has the vision of, of, of reaching out in the midst of all these 
uh, conflicts and, and, and disasters and, and, and all its impact on our people. To have this uh, beacon sounding out, heralding this calling for help. The second line that I finally uh, uh, like to share tonight is, and it's, it's good to hear again, is, is an old message. Uh, Alois mentioned it, that the call for witness, uh, you know, the, to start with our own selves. I thought of the, the gospel of, of the uh, Martha and Mary. I think, I think this is somehow our dilemma and our challenge and our blessing to keep our balance. Because if we are to be the heart of the church in the midst of the hopelessness of people, we need to listen first uh, to ponder all the richness of what I mentioned before, the, uh, the, the best kept secret of the church, so to say, but, but to nourish us to witness daily. So again, in other words, it's like the light. We are called to be light, to be put on top of the table to shine to other people. And that light has to be a face of hope, especially as we continue to discern uh, of our call as, as, as Caritas Internationalis and all its sisters and brothers, if you like, that perhaps some of whom they are being affected directly uh, so we from Oceania, uh, our um, little small uh, uh, part of the family, uh, we are looking forward for this uh, outcome of our celebration as we also call to re renew, to re look again at our who we are and our task as we continue on for the next 70 years. So thank you for listening and all the best for the rest of tonight's program. Thank you, Your Eminence Cardinal Murphy. I am sure that all of our Caritas Oceania members here this evening would join me in thanking you and sharing our sincere gratitude as always for your strength, good humor and the enduring wisdom that you bring in your leadership of our region. Um, I would now like to invite another very wise person to the floor, Mr. Pulatini Tuala, our Regional Coordinator of Caritas Oceania, to share further about the story of Caritas in our region. Tini has been part of Caritas Oceania's family for many years, first as the Director of Caritas Samoa and now as our Regional Coordinator. Tini, the floor is yours. Tinny, you'll just need to unmute yourself, sorry. Okay. Thanks, uh, Sophie. Celebrating birthdays or anniversaries are events done in a joyful and festivity mood. They're also done with lots of happy music. It has no time limit. In this regard, I really want to sing because it is a celebration, a celebration of 70 years, a celebration worthy of our time as a body within the church to pause and reflect and be in gratitude. Unfortunately, I cannot sing because I was only given five minutes to say my piece. So please, boss, can you show the slide with the map? One of the things I have learned coming from the Pacific is to show the map. Even up to this day, there are people who don't know where we are in this world. Some say, oh, you are in Africa. Others will say, oh, you are in South America. Sometimes I tell people that Samoa is a neighbor of Australia or New Zealand, so to give them an idea. Therefore, I want to show you the map so you see what Oceania looks like and where we are geographically. There are six full members, there are seven full members of our region. You look at the map, on the map, all the red hearts are full members. Caritas Australia, Caritas Aotearoa New Zealand, Caritas Papua New Guinea, 
Caritas Tonga, Caritas Fiji, Caritas Samoa. And then you have the Caritas Pacific Islands, also known as the Conference of Bishops of the Pacific. All the Golden Hearts on the map are members of the Caritas Pacific Islands. So counting this, we are actually seven members. Marta suggested I speak about the history of our region, but given the limited time I am allotted, you can easily find the history of each of our members on their respective web pages or at the Baobab. But in general terms, we are a young region comparatively. All the children in our family are younger than 60 years old. Am I right, Kirsty? Besides Caritas Australia and Caritas Aotearoa New Zealand, who are more developed, the other five members are developing, full of life and full of potentials. Birthdays and anniversaries are times for the family to come together. Commemorating our Universal Family's 70th anniversary is a befitting time for a small yet strong Oceania family to come together too. Upon reflecting on our regional journey, we will appreciate the guidance and the accompaniment of our universal family. The little steps that we have taken in Oceania makes meaning of us being part of Caritas Internationalis. Caritas Oceania has gotten and arrived today to where we are because of what others before us prepared as a Caritas family. They paved the way for us today. So we are where we are and who we are in 2021. On the occasion of this 70th anniversary of Caritas in the whole world, Oceania was asked to reflect on the theme, promoting integral human development, Caritas Oceania in the spirit, in the spirit of Laudato Si. This theme rings well with what our predecessors hope to achieve in the future. The small Pacific communities of Oceania is very familiar with the word family. The most basic unit of society that the Populorum Progressio speaks about is family. In small Pacific societies, family is the unit that is very important because it is basic, it is simple, it is easy, and it is home. When we look to past annual forums of our region, we see and hear the idea of family in all of them. It is the binding thread for our region. It is like the big Moana that surrounds all of our islands. Being in the Caritas Oceania family, using the state of the environment, one of the magazines, we are small, yet we are big. We are small island states, but we are also big ocean states. In September 2009, Samoa, the main theme was climate change, with two minor themes of engagement of youth in the work of Caritas and the encyclical Caritas in Veritate. This was an encyclical by Pope Benedict XVI, where he wrote to the church on integral human development in charity and truth. In 2010 in Australia, we underwent workshops and seminars on Catholic approaches to humanitarian and development work. It was building our family to be able to grasp what Caritas was set out to do. In 2011, in Auckland, Aotearoa, New Zealand, the theme was focused on capacity building for members. All the main reflection was on, who is my neighbor? A reminder for us to know who we are serving. In 2012, in Port Vila, Vanuatu, we reflected on Catholic social teaching and the practice of Caritas in Oceania, working together for integral human development. It was a reflection on how we apply our work while ensuring it is for the integral human development of the most in need. It was for us as a family to define what real development is. In 2013 in Singapore, we joined together with Caritas Asia and reflected together on Church of the Poor, the pedestal of the work and service of Caritas. It reminded us of who we are and how we are presenting ourselves to the mission of charity. This was the year of the Food for All campaign. In 2014 in Tonga, we continued our reflection on the special mission of Caritas in Oceania. Think globally, act locally. We were reminded of the importance of our connection with the whole confederation. 
Caritas Oceania is one part of the bigger family of Caritas, and we must do our part locally so to achieve the entire human family's mission. One of the main hi highlights of this year was the CEFO, State of the Environment for Oceania project led by Caritas of Aotearoa New Zealand. In September 2015 in Papua New Guinea, it was a general assembly year, and it was also the year the infamous encyclical Laudato Si was published. So we reflected on caring for our common home, Caritas Oceania in the light of the Laudato Si. It was an encyclical that brought an awakening not only for the church, but the whole world. And Caritas had to understand it better. Caritas Oceania appreciates this as it speaks about our concerns for the climate and the ramifications of man-made causes that are affecting our ocean and our habitat. In 2016 in Samoa, we focused our reflection on the Caritas family in the Pacific, putting Laudato Sea into action. We felt it was very crucial that we encourage the participation of our leaders, especially our bishops, a constant reminder of our environment. In September 2017 in Cairns, Australia, the reflection was on Caritas Oceania, our family, our future. The emphasis was stressing the concept of family. In the family, there are protocols and norms to be obeyed by our members. This will foster transparency and accountability. It will assist us to structure so we may serve the poor in an orderly manner. In 2018, in October, in Wellington, Aotearoa, New Zealand, it was a year of another big confederation campaign, Share the Journey. And what an appropriate theme for reflection. Caritas Oceania, let us go together. Meaere Tahitato. The symbol of walking together hand in hand was outstanding. And it spoke of who we are as a family in the Pacific walking together. In August 2019 in Umea, New Caledonia, a general assembly year, we wanted to make sure we continue to work in unity despite our differences. Hence the theme, working in unity for the common good. In every family, there are good times and bad times, some highs and some lows, but we're still a family. And by the very nature of family, it naturally holds the members together. It was also the forum that we formulated our priorities for 2020 to 2023, and also a new vision which states, Caritas Oceania is a strong, coordinated family that promotes practical activities to care for creation and the humanity of our great ocean states. Boss, can you please show the priorities? In, the, in our priorities, I just want to summarize that we summarize the uh, strategic orientations from CI, the, the five to three, covering all the five. So we have as a priority, number one, environmental protection. Number two, we have women and youth. Number three, our journey together. In the backdrop of these reflections, we kept in mind the Populorum Progressio of St. Paul VI, which states, the development of peoples must be well-rounded. It must foster development of each man and of the whole man. In 2020, due to the restrictions of COVID-19, we were not able to hold a forum, but we continued our mission. As Monsignor Michael Landau said last week, Caritas must never be closed. In August 2021, this year, a virtual annual forum in our own home countries, yet united in the skies, we reflected on fraternal cooperation in our Oceania family. Family and fraternal cooperation must have a connection somewhere. Caritas Oceania in the spirit of synodality is mindful of our common journey. We wish to gather, to involve, and to evangelize. And we want to celebrate this joyful occasion. We want to sing and shout. We want to dance and jump. We want to thank God for the love he has for Oceania, our big Moana, as a source of life throughout the world. We congratulate all the member regions as we celebrate our birthday. We thank our president, Cardinal Tagli. We thank our secretary general Aloysio and his team for organizing this. And we especially remember with thanks 
all the past leaders and workers on Caritas Oceania. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the council of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who reverently fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. Happy anniversary to all. Thank you. Thank you, Tinny. As always, thank you for sharing your deep commitment to the mission of Caritas in our region. And as always, I am in awe of your encyclopedic knowledge of all things Caritas Oceania. So thank you so much for sharing those rich reflections. As Tinny has touched upon, climate change and environmental protection have been primary concerns for our region for many years. Despite contributing minimally to global emissions, small island developing states of the Pacific are being impacted disproportionately by the impacts of climate change, including more frequent and severe extreme weather, coastal erosion and sea level rise all of which are threatening the land, livelihoods, well-being and cultural heritage of people across our region. For the past eight years, Caritas Oceania, led by Caritas Aotearoa New Zealand, has published an annual State of the Environment report, outlining the impacts of climate change, extreme weather and harmful extractive industries on communities in our region. As we meet today against the backdrop of global dialogues in Glasgow, I would like to invite two members of the State of the Environment Working Group, Karen Anaya from Caritas Samoa and Kositatino Tikomai Bolatagane from Caritas Archdiocese of Suva, Caritas Fiji, to share stories of climate impact and response from across Caritas Oceania. Karen, over to you. Thank you, Sophia. Hello everyone, Talu Falava. My name is Karen Anaya, joining you from Samoa, very far away from my homeland in Mexico City, but very much in love with my adoptive homeland in the Pacific. Environmental justice can be considered the principle that all people and communities are entitled to equal protection of environmental and public health laws and regulations. Some countries though, are at a clear disadvantage. Oceania, as Sophie said, is at disproportionate risk for being exposed to environmental hazards. Environmental justice is related to every single basic human right, from the right to adequate access to healthy food, clean water, and safe shelter, to being able to breathe clean air. Clean water, clean air, and a healthy home are basic human rights, but the stark reality is that the water we drink and the air we breathe are governed by sometimes oppressive global systems. There is an immediate need for tight regulations to protect the most affected communities around the world who are often left outside the climate conversation. Despite being almost among the most affected regions in the world, literally sinking as we speak and contributing the least to global warming, small Pacific islands hold little power in, decision, in the decision-making table, almost silent against the plans and ambitions of more affluent countries. We must understand that climate justice requires social justice and vice versa. We need to protect both people and the planet. The goal of climate action is to protect all life. So why is environmental justice important to Oceania? There are countless reasons ranging from a significant decrease in fish because of water acidification, to loss of crops because of significantly changing weather patterns, to the contamination of boreholes from saltwater intrusion to the increasing threat of cyclones, floods, and droughts. But perhaps the most obvious one is because Oceania is sinking. Two days ago, I celebrated my birthday and I went to a beach, more like what once was a beach. I stayed at a house by the coast where in 2016, when I first visited the village, I climbed a coconut tree and made sand angels in almost five meters of sand from the house to the shore. Today, only five years later, the tree is gone, the beach is gone, and the waves are destroying all the houses in the shoreline. True environmental justice refers to redistributing decision-making power back to vulnerable communities that are systematically impacted the most. We need to work collectively in the spirit of Laudato Si. 
Here, we're amplifying voices in international platforms. We're producing videos portraying the reality on the ground, utilizing the power of social media. We're introducing more resilient crops. We're mobilizing people to actively protect their ecosystems, taking a stand against the exploitation of large corporations. We're educating youth and encouraging continuous dialogue that involves children, women, and people with disabilities. We're providing water tanks. We're pre-positioning supplies. And sadly, we're preparing communities for the now inevitable, including loss of land, displacement, and destruction from storm, stronger storms. There's hope. Hopefully, it's not too late for us. But we need people around the world to unite, to practice self-education, to elevate the voices of impacted communities, to hold world leaders accountable, to use the power of boycott. Together, we can save the planet. Together, we can save our lives. And now we will share a short video portraying some of what I've just described. This year, the members of the Caritas Oceania family came together for our annual forum, which was hosted online by Caritas Australia. There were three key values that emerged from the forum. The first was our desire to reimagine our relationship with God and with our faith. And this includes creating opportunities for our members to sit on one mat as we weave together our cultures and traditions. The second was a desire to reimagine our relationship with creation, particularly as climate change, rising sea levels, and climate induced displacement are real lived experiences for our region. The third was a desire to reimagine our relationship with one another and the broader Caritas Internationalist family. And this includes focusing on shifting the power and recognizing the capabilities that exist within local church actors and communities. Going back down to the south coast again, just recently in that, um, there's still people still a little bit apprehensive, for want of a better word, maybe a little bit more, um, not 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 scared, but apprehensive about um, through the anxiety and fear that's still left in them. They've been through so much down there. They had the drought, you know, then then. We had, you know, COVID, so many things that they've been through, the bushfires, and then so many people are struggling and that through it. And they're just the guts and the courage and the strength that you hear from the stories down there. But they're really appreciating just having some of them tools that we provide just to make sense of them, how to, you know, um, yeah, focus on what you can control, not what you can't. There's a little, one of the tools we use is about what I call chasing the dots. And it's about the dots going all over the place, but it's about focusing on what we can control, focusing on what we can do. So the Savannah burning methodology is actually based on traditional burning, cool burns early in the season. So just after the wet season when the country is still a little bit green, uh, a little bit wet, when you have cool burns coming in, your greenhouse gas emissions from those cool fires are going to be a lot less than the hot damaging wildfires that come through in the summertime. And so by having the cool fires you have low carbon emissions which over an average of 10 to 15 years means that you'll be reducing the amount of carbon or greenhouse gases that go up into the atmosphere. It means that you can look after country and this is really the, the main point of the work that we're doing is by having cool burns which have been uh, practiced by many traditional owners over 65,000 years uh, they're now being paid for. You can actually look after country, you can have jobs, you can look after sacred sites through cool burns and corporations from down south will actually pay for those outcomes because you're producing a carbon credit. So uh, those economies are now sustainable based on cultural practices with a scientific basis as well. We 
we have three things there are three three words i want you to remember kaitiakitanga which is what we have all been talking about which is important that if we look after our land it will look after us and two youth are part of the solution they are part of the solution and their views and their perspective is part of the solution. And three, time. Colonizers have been have been telling us how to do things according to their time. And now as indigenous people, we need to take back and understand what time looks like for us. We're championing uh, issues on climate change. We're at the big conference of the parties, the, the COP meetings. We're at the UN meetings. These meetings are coming to the Pacific and we've had global leaders uh, visiting the Pacific. Our pleas and our cries for strong climate action have been broadcast to the world. Year after year, statement after statement, report after report. Yet the lack of corresponding global action in response to that is woefully inadequate. The water is literally lapping at our feet and we're sharing these stories. But the response from those who can actually make a huge impact is still one of indifference and largely inaction. The challenges that Tonga face um, nowadays is the sea um, level rise, which um, rises six millimeter per year, and also um, intense um, tropical cyclone um, has been happening um, recently in the, in the island. Caritas Tonga is conducting a training on the disaster preparedness um, to communities, and we are engaging the youth um, in the training, and also um, engaging the the volunteers from the Tonga National Youth Congress and the Tarshis and Youth in um, disaster uh, emergency response. We are now discussing the impact of climate change for coastal communities, atolls, and like us in the Pacific. We are now facing severe impact of us, the impact of climate change. Our coastal uh, shoreline has been eroded. Low-lying islands are almost gone, are sinking. For example, here in uh, PNG, we have the uh, Catret Islanders. They have been uh, internally displaced as uh, climate uh, migrants. And we continue to face this impact of uh, climate change. Thank you, Karen, and thank you to all who participated in, in that wonderful video. I would now like to invite Kossi from Caritas Fiji to share with you some of our calls to action from Caritas Oceania. Thank you, Sophie. Uh, I hope you can all hear me well uh, from wherever you are in every parts of the world. Uh, here from Fiji, uh, and I'm here to share some of the words, some of the work that Caritas Ocean have put together in terms of our minds, our hearts in raising up uh, at the COP, uh, at the COP26 meeting. So we, the members of Caritas Ocean, yeah, having listening to the signs of times, in the voices of our people, of science, and of the earth herself call on leaders and governments of the world and those participating in COP26 on biodiversity, climate change, and the seabed to hear our words. And this is uh, what we have raised with them. We, we, we urge the leaders to hear our voice, to cut carbon emissions urgently, to minimize sea level rise and more extreme weather patterns because this is what is affecting us very much here in the small Pacific Islands, the sea level rise and also the extreme weather patterns that have we been experiencing in the past decades. So we urge our world leaders to please cut, 
to please uh, in your table of discussion to urgently uh, discuss that we need to cut carbon, uh, carbon emissions and to keep alive the, uh, the 1.5 degrees Celsius goal of the Paris Agreement. It is vital for us because we are facing the wrath of uh, carbon emissions that are emitted by, uh, by big uh, powerful countries and we are the small emitters uh, in the Pacific Islands are facing this. And so we urge these leaders to keep that alive. And we are happy to hear that some uh, powerful leaders are committed to even zero degree Celsius uh, uh, goal. So that, that is uh, for us a positive move. And also we urge them to support the urgent climate adaptation and relocation financed by government and partnered by communities. I think this is the most important in terms of our finance report, in terms of our CEFO report, that we make sure that whatever is discussed on the table in regard to finance uh, to, help, uh, uh, to help our communities, that our governments uh, and communities to partner with that, so that whatever is, whatever is coming from the top in terms of finance to reach actually those who are mostly affected in our communities here in the Pacific. And we also urge to our, our leaders in, at COP26 to please ban all seabed mining and exploration in the Pacific. The ocean is vital to us. And if we are going to mine the ocean, if we are going to deep sea mining and destroy our ocean, we will be more into our graveyard in the future. So we, we requested, we urge our leaders to please ban further seabed mining in, uh, and exploration. And also strengthen knowledge in terms of uh, our lamentation, we strengthen knowledge sharing across the region to learn from each other and find common solutions. For example, on resilient building and early warning systems. These are some of the things that we, the Caritas Oceania family, uh, have been uh, discussing in our meetings, in our uh, uh, in, in our conferences. That we work together to share our learnings for for the purpose of resilient building uh, for our for, for what we are facing and also to strengthen the ability of communities to provide local disaster response, for example, in emergency stockpile supplies. And uh, that is very vital for us as well in terms of pre-preparations before disaster, uh, that we strengthen the ability of communities to do that. And we develop climate response project based on sound science, indigenous and, no indigenous and local knowledge, and with full participation and involvement of affected communities. And last but not the least, we are always to listen, to listen to young people, to elders, to indigenous and local people who know their place well. Listen to what science and earth are telling us. And so all these voices are heard and hid in problem solving, decision making and implementation. I think, uh, I believe Bishop Mafia has been stressing on this, that we need to listen. And I believe Pope Francis in Laudato Si also have also highlighted the importance of listening to indigenous people the, because they, 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 they know their place and they are the ones that can solve the issue better in terms of how they do things uh, uh, the way they do. Uh, and that can also be a way forward in addressing the ecological problems we face because indigenous peoples do best where they remain in, in wherever they are. So these are some of the uh, some of the uh, important uh, discussions that we have had all throughout with uh, Caritas uh, Oceania partners that we need our world leaders to understand. And also we need our Caritas uh, international family to know the importance of, uh, as Tini was saying, families and listening to one another in terms of moving forward in addressing the issue we are facing today. Uh, and here in Fiji, we are the youngest family of the Caritas family internationalists. Uh, we are just about three years in March next year, uh, but we are very much committed uh, in terms of uh, the problem we're facing. And the Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Fiji, who is the president of Caritas Fiji, is very much uh, 
committed to the work of trying to address the ecological problem that the world is facing, especially here uh, for us at the Oceania. And we believe that uh, whatever uh, what Pope Francis said, the need for ecological vision is very important. And therefore we need to listen to our young people, our elders, uh, who and local people who know their place well, and also to share with one another the knowledge and the wisdom we have. For then only we can be able to change mindset, to change hearts, for people to turn back the way the Lord wants us to be in terms of how we intend to live our life here in the planet Earth in which we live in and protect our common home. So thank you, Sophie. Thank you, everyone, for listening uh, from across the globe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Karen and Kosti, both of you, for the, the passion with which you always bring to these discussions. Mm -hmm. As highlighted in the stories that we've shared, the impacts of climate change are being felt disproportionately by those most vulnerable to marginalisation and poverty. In particular, the impacts of climate change on women and girls are of deep concern for us as a region. As a region, we are committed to the promotion of the rights, well-being and participation of women and girls within our organisations and within the communities we accompany. We see women and girls playing vital roles in building resilience and leading communities in adapting to climate change. Here to speak to the voices of women in Oceania are Julianne Hiki, Director of Caritas Aotearoa New Zealand, and Malia Suliana Falemaka, Director of Caritas Tonga. Jules, the floor is yours. Uh, kia ora koutou. Thank you, Sophie. It is a delight today to be sharing the floor with my sister Suliana, Director of Caritas Tonga. For many years, Caritas Tonga and Caritas Aotearoa New Zealand have had a history of working closely together. So it is a good it is good to con continue that tradition, even with the part of my feet popping in there. Um, as had been outlined, a key strategic priority for the Caritas Oceania family is promoting the rights, leadership, and participation of women and girls in our organizations and in our region. Our Caritas Oceania members will work to support women and girls' rights and gender equality in a range of different ways. And Suliana will be sharing some of the issues and also the inspiring stories from across Moana Nui Akiwa, our Pacific Ocean that unites us. But first, let me set the scene about the role of Caritas and the church in our region. If you could move on to the next slide, please. And that one, yes, thank you. Uh, churches and faith-based organizations have a critical role to play in upholding the human rights of women and girls in our region, especially in changing behavior and challenging culture. With over 90% of people across the Pacific identifying as Christian, faith is central to the lives of Pacific peoples and churches play an important role in Pacific societies. People respect church leaders and listen to what they say. Church leaders can frame social issues in locally appropriate terms and with a spiritual dimension which is highly effective and influential. And this is particularly important when there is a need to challenge potentially harmful cultural practices and to change mindsets, for example, on gender-based violence, sorcery accusation related violence, or the practice of payment for compensation for crimes. Churches in the Pacific also have extensive reach, long established networks, and a presence in locations where other actors may not be able to access. One example that came to mind when I was preparing this today was the women's network in Kiribati. Kiribati is a country with over 33 islands and 20 of them are inhabited, spread across one of the largest areas you could imagine. And in every single one of those 20 inhabited islands, there are the Catholic women. And their network, Tetu Naina, is very strong on uh, utilizing um, traditional knowledge and wisdom about nutrition so that they can combat the impact of climate change on their um, atoll and on their islands. It's also backed by a strong catechesis and a strong uh, faith basis. 
So networks like that are so valuable in what we can do. So there are representatives embedded within community who have strong relationships at the local level and their best to ensure the targeting of at-risk women and girls. And I would like to hand over to uh, my friend and colleague, Suliana, to tell more about the key issues and how we in Oceania are responding to those. Thank you, Jules, for presenting the first part of our presentation. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. And Malo Lele, as we say here in the Kingdom of Tonga. My name is Maria Suliana Falemaka, Director of Caritas Tonga. I will share from the heart of our region the issues facing women and girls' rights in Oceania. So please to bear with me. There are so many issues facing women and girls in Oceania, but I will pick only three to share with you all. Caritas Oceania members work to support women and girls' rights and gender equality in a range of different sectors, including through programs designed to the first one, end violence against women and girls. Second, ensure gender specific protection measure during humanitarian and emergency response to disasters. Last one, increasing women's access to education and income opportunities. Key issues in response from Caritas Oceania. The first issue, violence against women and girls. Violence against women and girls has been an issue of extremely high concern. In some Pacific countries, over 60% of women have experienced violence. An example, Caritas Fiji is training community members across Fiji to become part of a voluntary first responders network to address sexual and gender-based violence. This initiative includes both prevention and response activities and the involvement of male advocates. All first responders are given safeguarding training. The increase in violence against women and girls during COVID-19 has been raised as an urgent issue by Caritas Oceania members. Example, the statistics are alarming. In Fiji, the National Domestic Violence Helpline recorded 87 calls in February this year, 187 calls in March, then 527 calls in April. Of these calls, close to 50% of women reported a correlation between COVID-19 and an increase in violence. In Samoa, there has been a 150% increase in helpline calls compared to the same time last year. In Donga, during the 15 days of COVID-19 lockdown, the Women and Children Crisis Center saw a 54% increase in the number of requests for help. The second issue, ensure gender-specific protection measure during humanitarian and emergency response to disasters. In many areas of the Pacific, women are not well represented in decision-making processes nor actively prioritized in the first round of aid distribution during disaster crisis. Their voices are not being heard and their stories are not being told. Yet, evidence shows 
that the participation of women increases the effectiveness of humanitarian outcomes and reduces gender inequalities. Example, Caritas Tonga has observed the issue that sometimes households headed by women don't receive supplies in the first round of emergency distribution after a disaster as mentioned above. This may be because this household have not been captured on down list, which places women and children in a more vulnerable situation or can also be due to the fact of cultural hierarchy and gender inequality. To address this gap, Caritas Tonga ensure they reach the most vulnerable by asking their parish committee to provide household beneficiary list as the committee are part of the com community and known all the families. The last issue, increasing women's access to education and income opportunities. Education is one of the most essential tools that ensure a comfortable and successful life for women and girls in the future. However, Caritas members in Papua New Guinea and Samoa have raised women and girls access to education as a concern and issue. In both island countries, the education of boys and young men is prioritized over that of girls and young women. Of the girls enrolled in primary school, only half go on to attend secondary schools, most particularly targeted in this situation are the young girls and women from remote location, urban villages. Example, Catholic agency in Papua New Guinea, including Caritas Papua New Guinea, are helping to increase access to education for girls, including providing safe shared accommodation for girls to attend secondary school, as well as other support, such as more scholarships, and fee support for girls is needed. Women's economic empowerment is also an issue in some Pacific countries. Across the region, men outnumber women in paid employment outside the agricultural sector by approximately two to one in males typically earn 20 to 50% more than women because they work in jobs attract, attracting higher salaries. Example, to address this, Caritas Samoa has previously implemented a women empowerment program with the support of Caritas Australia and DFED. They identified that the wives of untitled men are at, at disadvantage. These women have very little or no voice in their villages and largely stay home to look after children while the husbands work. Within this program, these women took part in training on income generating activities such as sewing. Caritas somewhat then provide sewing materials to help them start a sewing business to generate income. Thank you. That's all my sharing about the key issue for women and children facing in Oceania. Malo, over to you, Jules. Malo, Pito, Suliana, um, and thank you for outlining the efforts that are being made uh, across our region and are contributing to real and positive changes in the lives of women and girls. Um, but despite that, work remains. And as Caritas Oceania, we see the priorities and our focus for the future as being the need to challenge potentially harmful cultural practices and norms and strengthen the focus on protection while mitigating the increased risk of violence during disasters, including COVID-19, 
and climate related disasters like you heard about earlier. We also know of the importance of more interventions to address the lack of voice, participation and consultation of women and girls at many levels of decision making. Subsidiarity is important as a Catholic social teaching principle to make sure that the voices of women and girls are heard and listened to. The importance of community-led approaches for reaching the most vulnerable women and girls and for implementing effective, sustainable programs. And we acknowledge the critical role of Pacific churches and faith-based faith -based organizations in changing culture and behavior and the need to strengthen engagement and support for them to do more. So there is much more to do to support women and girls' rights and gender equality in our work. But as members of, Car of the Caritas Oceania family, we remain committed and hopeful of the change and the hope that we can bring. Namihi nui kia koto, levu, malo opito. Thank you, Julianne and Suliana, for those really rich and beautiful reflections and that really hope-filled look at the way forward for our region and particularly for women and girls in our region that we work alongside. Um, we are now reaching the end of our formal reflections for this evening, so I would like to invite Kirsty Robertson, the Chief Executive Officer of Caritas Australia, to share with us a final reflection and prayer as we bring our formal proceedings to a close. Kirsty, over to you. Thanks, Sophie. As a, a region, we've made a very deliberate decision to sit on one mat and weave together our cultures and our traditions. And we truly hope you've enjoyed the opportunity to join us on that mat tonight. Across the region of Oceania, we draw on our power. Our power comes from our knowledge, our faith and our traditional way of doing things. As Cardinal Murphy spoke of in relation to COP26, we truly believe that our region's Indigenous knowledge must be respected as a lesson in resilience, a form of climate science and an example of right relationship. There is something very special and entirely unique about the Caritas Oceania region, and Tinny mentioned it. We truly are a family. Our family is best understood by putting your bare feet in our waters and on our land. It's something that's best felt by sitting down with us, sharing a meal with us and making music with us. And we hope that one day we will be able to welcome you into our homes. But in the meantime, we hope that tonight you caught a little glimpse of our Caritas Oceania family. We are the youngest region in the CI Confederation and we believe our region has much to offer the Confederation in the next 70 years of its journey. And indeed, we believe we have much to offer our broken world. Earlier this year, the Caritas Oceania Youth Alliance wrote a prayer that will be shared as part of an upcoming CI Youth Initiative. We thought that this would be a lovely way to end our webinar tonight. So I invite you all to still yourself, clear yourself of the thoughts of the busy day that you've just had, or if you're on the other side of the world, of your to-do list for the day to come. Creator of all goodness, as a symbol of greatness, you created a beautiful blue Moana to be our home. As an expression of your beauty, a greenery lush of islands and a continent emerged. As a reminder of peace, you enriched it with fertile tropical uniqueness, full of life. As a sign of hope for creation, you bestowed a rainbow of cultures and peoples as your stewards. God of love, enlighten us of the sacredness of your creation. Inspire us to be able to clearly see your goodness. Renew us so that we may have the courage to stand up as your witness, to help sustain and care for all of your creation. Amen. 
Thank you, Kirsty, for those beautiful words and that final reflection. Um, finally, on behalf of our Oceania family, we would like to thank you all again from jo for joining us this evening, this morning, this afternoon from your own corner of the world. It's been an absolute pleasure to share this part of our story with all of you. And with that, I will pass over to Marta to share some co uh, closing words for this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sophie, your eminence and all the, the speakers to have uh, uh, guided us into this, uh, this wonderful journey on Caritas Oceania's work. Um, as for the other webinars, we also linked this, um, this conference this morning to a specific project, which will be to uh, help the local caritas is in Oceania to strengthen their capacity and being even more effective uh, in their work. As we have seen today, uh, their work is uh, really crucial for the region and they are at the forefront in many, many areas, not only the environment, but uh, also protection of the women and uh, vulnerable people. And, uh, and we have to notice that not only Caritas Oceania as one of the youngest Caritas, but it is also one of the region with uh, uh, an important presence of women uh, in the leadership. Um, just a few words to remember you the, the next webinar, which will be next week on the 16th of November at 11 o'clock Rome time. And next week we will, uh, uh, we will travel to Africa to know uh, better Caritas work in this region that is really in coping with uh, many, many emergencies, uh, but is uh, continuing its uh, very uh, important work even now where the consequences of COVID-19 are really terrible for the local population. And now I will Thank everybody, and I'll give the floor to Caritas Internationale Secretary General Aloysius John for some uh, uh, conclusion. Thank you. Thank you, Marta. <clears throat> um, first of all, thanks to all the speakers from the region, very enriching sharing and also insights on the life of the region. Before I conclude, I would like to recognize the presence of the of Ambassador Poro, and then Dr. Alo, of, uh, President of Caritas Asia, Ms., uh, Mr. Gabriel Hati, President of Caritas Mona, Zar, and many other members who are present there from the other regions whom may, maybe I forget. During these discussions, thanks to Cardinal Murphy uh, for the precious, precious message he gave as a witnessing. He stressed the importance of small acts with a generous heart that contributes to achieve great results, unique results. His eminence emphasized the importance of faith in the midst, uh, in the midst of chaos and how Caritas is a call to give through faith, the face of God, giving hope to little ones. Witnessing as Caritas at the heart of the church when everything is in a mess, through listening and being attentive to the voices that, ra that rises, listening to the people, listening to the cry of the earth. And that is what Caritas Oceania is doing. We also heard how keeping the faith dimension firm, Caritas in the region uh, are promoting integral human development through integral ecology, thus creating harmony between humanity and ecology in a spirit of faith. The different presentations eloquently highlighted how charity, environmental and social justice and faith are interconnected. And this is a unique experience in the region leading to integral human development with the firm conviction to promote women leadership. A variety of actors, actions leading to promote the dignity of the human person in their own environment by respecting their own culture 
Thank you for these insights, for these unique reflections. And I wish you all the best. And thank you once again. Goodbye.